Hey, this is Brian with King Grizzly, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of these fancy 100% wide carousels with the neat offset feature, so the, the slides go off the side, and we have the ability to put anything we want in each slide. So you can see I can put in custom slides if I want to, can build anything I want. We can set up pagination. It works on tablet, mobile, desktop. Really neat effect. Let's take a look at how to do this. So I asked my wife for a few fine jewelry websites to look at, so she recommends some brands. So I was looking around to see who, what, what the jewelry sites are doing, just for a niche to try. So Tiffany has kind of a nice full width design here. I looked at Jared's. Theirs aren't as fancy, but they definitely have some kind of rotator. And you can see there's a text-based one here. They're not all product. And then I looked at one called Van Cleef, which is quite a bit pricier than Claire's Boutique. Um, and so they have uh, like a draggable uh, carousel here and you can see ours is draggable as well. Um, so and we can turn on the arrows if we want or turn them off and turn on pagination. But definitely the offset's a fun effect. So let me show you how to put this together. Uh, here's the page I put together in Elementor. It's just a container. I dropped in a heading and a button to make it look a little bit more like a real page. And then it's just the carousel widget. And inside the widget, we have slides. So each one of these is a slide. If I open up the carousel and I click on one, you'll see I put in an image and then I put in some text and I really went through and just styled things up and I set up the carousel settings. So let me show you uh, how to do this. So we'll just kind of make one down below here. So we'll add a new container. I'm gonna go with Flexbox. Could do either, um, but we'll go with Flexbox. And then really we just need the carousel widget. So click on the little icon with the nine boxes, looking for the carousel. There's a few to choose from. The more recent ones Elementor's worked on, which will allow custom content inside, uh, are, well, for sure this is the one we want, carousel. Now there's one called loop carousel, which is essentially similar, but loop carousel is going to fetch dynamic content. So you build a loop template, and then you'd pull in something like uh, blog post content or custom post type content. We just want the, the normal carousel for now, um, but it is possible to make something dynamic. Um, but well, I'll show you how to just make this, this static one for, for now. Uh, so when you drag it into your container, it initially has three slides and the settings are the way they are. Um, so what we'll do, I won't spend as much time making it quite as fancy as mine, but I'll show you the gist. So we'll work on slide one for a little bit. Um, so first thing is I'm going to just give it, um, oh, actually I'm going to zero out the padding because it's grabbing the default padding. Uh, drop an image in there. So find the image widget. We'll drag one in there. Let's get a heading. Drop a heading in there. And then I had some text too, right? Um, so we'll drop some text in it. Now you can style these up however you want. I'm going to just copy my styles and paste style. If you didn't know you could do that, there's a free tip. Right click on a widget, hit copy. Right click on another, hit paste style. Awesome. Okay, so for the image, let me show you what happens here. I click on an image. I go find one of these jewelry pictures. I'll just click on one at random. This one here. There we go. Images may be different size, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Um, and then I'm gonna on this slide here. I think I'm gonna change the gap a little bit. I don't want to spend too much time on styling. Uh, pe people can kind of figure that out. Um, so there's one slide, right? So in, in fact, if I click on the carousel, I'm gonna delete slides two and three, and I'm gonna duplicate the one I just made a couple times just to get the idea. I generally work on one for a while, get the styling right for desktop, tablet, mobile, then clone it. Now, if we have a different picture, so let, me, let me grab a couple different pictures here. Um, she looks fancy, we'll put her in here. Oops, she's too tall. And then we'll click on another one. Here's the one. Okay, so you'll notice none of my images are the same height. So one thing to think about is what to do about images in the case of having a rotator like this. I have another video which I can put in the description that talks about using ratios and has some great ideas for doing that. But for the purpose of this demonstration, if you click on an image, go to style, we can set a height. And so I'm gonna just punch one in. And what happens is sometimes that looks good and sometimes it squishes things. So what we wanna do is set the object fit to cover. 
and then the position center center. So now if I copy that style, I right click and I paste that on this woman, uh, she'll be clipped in. Now I might decide, hmm, not tall enough. I need it to be a little taller. So maybe I'd choose a bigger height, like 340. It depends on you know what you're up to. You could, you could have a design where you want taller pictures. Generally speaking, it's probably a good idea to just have um, the photos prepared at the same uh, dimensions in the first place, but this will make sure that they all look good. So we've got three here, and we really want to just, I'm not going to spend more time on styling because that's something that will take too long, but um, let me just go ahead and add a few more slides. So we're going to click on the carousel, and we'll duplicate, we'll just give ourselves a bunch of slides here. Let me just change the pictures though so we can stay sane. Um, so I'm going to go over here, I'll click on one, just find another picture. And what we want to do is work on that, that offset. And we want it to also be 100% wide. Don't worry about that. The image will size correctly. Sometimes it, it for a second looks like the wrong size. Okay, there's a kind of nice bracelet. All right. Okay, one more. <clears throat> Okay, now I want mine to get all the way to the side. So I need to click on the container that this carousel lives in, go to advanced, and then we need to adjust the padding. So I'm going to zero it out. And then I'm also, I'm going to give the top and bottom some padding maybe just to get some space from other content on the page. But I also need to go to the layout and I need to set the width to full width. So now what will happen is once the page reloads, you can see our carousel is now making it all the way to the side, which is great. Uh, I would like to click on my carousel and start working on the settings. So for desktop, how many slides do we want to display? I believe, let's go check what I did on the other one. Let's click on the carousel. So I set it to four slides on display. Scroll one when you click. And then if I go to settings, I played with the animation speeds, but we really want to work on this offset. So I'm going to go down here to our carousel. What did I just say? Four slides on display. You can, of course, set whatever number you want. And I'm going to scroll one on a click. Now it shows four up, but with the offset, it sort of shows like four plus two halves, depending on how we do it. I like to set a scroll speed of about 6,500 milliseconds. Uh, and then, okay, so direction. It's scrolling to the left. If we want to go right, we could. We can set the transition duration. I want to offset on both sides. Now, you can offset on just one. Sometimes it's neat to just offset to the right. But I'm going to do both. And then you can set whatever width you want. I'm going to go with 96. Just so you know, it's not going to show here. So if I hit update, we're going to want to go to our page, refresh. And then we'll scroll down and look. You can see the offsets are happening now. It's already looking really great. Uh, so let me just cover a few more settings and then you'll know you'll be good to go. So uh, let's see what our options are. Navigation. If we want, we have the ability to have navigation or we can turn it off. So that would be the arrows on the left and the right side of the carousel. I might actually leave them off. It looks nice, but I'll show you how to style these. Number one, when you do turn on this arrow animation, just so you know, you can choose from the icon library, arrows and carrots and things. If you choose uh, all icons, you can see the full library and search. By default, it shows you recommended ones. So you could choose one uh, that's different or click on the upload SVG and you can upload your own. That's really, really nice. You can control the position of the arrows uh, to the left, the center, the right. So I can adjust where they're sitting on the page. That one's a little hard to see. Let me show you the right hand one. So this is the right hand one. Look at that. If you wanted to do something cool, like put both of the arrows um, up like to the top here above the slider or below, you could, I think. So like, for example, um, I could say, set that to zero and then align it to the top and I could adjust the position. So I could pull it up here. So, so let me show you a little trick. Go to style and then you can style up the navigation so i could give it a background color let's say i wanted it to be something dark just so we could see it i can give it a padding maybe like 12 something like that and you can see where i'm going with this so if i went uh back to the content tab to navigation i could play with 
these offsets. So I have negative 45. I need to adjust it a little more. There we go. I could go to the left hand one and I could tell that to align to the right to the top. I would also set that to negative. It should basically just be negative 50, right? So negative 50 and then I'll make this one negative 50. So now they're sitting on top of each other, but this one I need it to Let's see, is it negative? Which, yeah, I need to back it up. So back it up, back it up. Look at that. I can put these pretty much wherever I want. So you just have to remember end, center. So center would be over there. End is over here. If I wanted to, instead of going on top, I could go to the middle or down to the bottom. It's all in um, how you play with these settings. So you can come up with some really neat um, navigational elements. The pagination is down here. I tend to turn it off. I don't feel like these dots add much value, but you can style them. If you go to pagination, you can play around with the custom position of those, the size, uh, spacing from the slides. I like to just turn them off. Um, so I just go to none. You can also do fraction or progress, but I think it looks pretty nice sometimes just to turn those off. And so then really the last thing left to note is that on tablet and mobile, uh, you'd probably want to adjust your your product slide styles right but but what you can do is click on the carousel go over to the settings sorry slides and play with how many slides are on display so i might choose i had four before maybe i'd say three scroll one on uh scroll or you could do three whatever you want um, change that. I'll probably change that offset to be something a little more modest. And then I'm going to take care of uh, the phone size on the phone. It, sometimes it looks good to just, I, I guess, if we did one, let me try this because I'm not sure what will happen. If I do one and scroll one, but I have an offset of, I don't know what, let's just do 48 pixels or something like that. Let's update and see what happens. I've, I was doing two and two uh, for mobile, but let me give this a refresh. And we'll just see if I size down the browser what happens. So you can see my arrows are over here. And you can you can style the hover states if you want to. I'm not sure that this is better than what I had. I just wanted to let you know that's possible. But finally, let's go down to the phone. So let me see here. There we go. I had a little uh, lazy loading issue, I think, going on. That looks pretty awesome. Just so you know, I was using Optimal and it was lazy loading and elementor some can do the same potentially sometimes these next slides don't lazy load and you have to actually exclude that in your optimization plugin so that they'll actually show uh, but look at that i mean this is nice looking this looks pro i think this looks better than say jared's and we did that in a matter of minutes. So hopefully that gives you a good idea on how to approach these you can build anything you want into these so like i built this this slide different than the rest. You can do the same. You can put whatever you want in these slides. And then if you want to make a dynamic loop, looping one, you just use the loop carousel widget. And then what you do is you build a loop item template and pull that into the loop carousel. And, and you can hook it up to dynamic tags. That's another video though. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. And I hope you have a really great day.